Welcome to Joel Asset News, like a top stories in crypto. And I'll bring up now to bite sized pieces today. Just as the thumbnail suggests, there's some pretty huge news. And all has to relate to MasterCard as they bring in cryptocurrency to all of their merchants and their banks as far as their payment network. So we'll take a look at what's going on there. I'll take a look at a nice little story about it. Elon does it again and tries to sink a certain cryptocurrency, but it bounces right back. Then we'll talk about Janet Yellen, the head of the CFTC, as she talks about unrealized tax gains which is a catastrophe if this goes through. And then we'll just do a quick update on uh, the 100% free website, danteachescrypto.com. But first, let's take a look at what's going on in the market. So today, it is Monday. We made it through the weekend, and we're here on a Monday. Maybe uh, it might be actually a non-dump day. We'll see, because sometimes it goes into Tuesday. But so far, we're looking pretty good. Uh, market cap's up 2.6, 2.7 trillion, depending on where you look at. Uh, the Bitcoin price itself is around 63,000, so uh, not too bad. It's like every time we hit 60,000 this weekend, it just got gobbled by, right back up by the bulls. So looking pretty good. And then Bitcoin's up, Ethereum's up. Uh, is anything down? I think that's a big question. Doge is down by half a percent. No big, no big thing there. 10% up for Chainlink as they had a nice little announcement with the Associated Press teaming up with them. Uh, 7.6, blah, blah, blah. Shiba Inu up 17%. Wow. And then uh, 8% in the last hour or so. So yeah, it looks like uh, it's a pretty good day so far for all crypto holders. I think everybody or most everybody uh, is holds Bitcoin is in profit. So we'll take uh, just real quick just to take a look at some on-chain analysis, a little TA. Looks like we've got this uh, nice little pattern forming as everything is going up. We're not uh, we're not in the overbought territory yet as far as the RSI goes, but you can see that if we take a look at the Bollinger Bands, everything is within that range. And again, uh, over the weekend, as things uh, dipped to around the 60,000, just got eaten back up, eaten up, 60,000, eaten, eaten, and then we're looking pretty good. As far as the MACD convergence, convergence divergence, everything is looking okay so right now. But I think we could trade like this for, you know, 64, 65 for a while, but still looking pretty positive. On top of that, We'll take a look at uh, what's going on as far as longs and shorts. This is why BYBT. And it's amazing to me. I was I was putting this video together and it takes me hours to do it. But uh, as I was looking at the uh, the 15 minute mark, I saw a bunch of longs come through like five and 15, 30 minute mark. And now over the last, uh, if we just scale out 12 hours and four hours and things like that, it's pretty even. And I think what was going on, well, partially what was going on was that with the NFTs, I mean NFTs, the ETFs, so many acronyms, uh, with the ETF as far as like ProShares, which uh, did really hot the first day and then just took a slide and then was trading sideways and then dumped again, not dumped, but pulled back, whatever you want to call it. Eh, it's actually a dump because it went below its original price and then just traded sideways. But then uh, this morning, as we got up and everything starts getting going October 25th, uh, nice little, nice little pump. And then uh, here we are right here. So everybody's pretty ecstatic, but it's still at 40.82, which is roughly where it started out on October 20th, even if we uh, peel back. And then also the second Bitcoin futures ETF, which is uh, BTF from Valkyrie. Uh, that one did not do well in its initial debut and just kind of slid down, tra traded sideways. And then this morning again, goes right up. And we're also waiting for the, uh, for the VanEck uh, Bitcoin futures ETF to uh, get going. I haven't heard. I, it should happen this week, but uh, I haven't uh, seen what's going on. So we, if we take a look at the ETFs, I think that could uh, play into part of why you know people are like, hey, you know what? Uh, I feel pretty good about what's going on. Then also, of course, Pi Cycle Top Indicator. Just so everybody knows, uh, this was I was correct. I was corrected on this. This was actually created after the fact, and it's been right once, as people tell me. So. Uh, we can see here that uh, it just predicts when the, uh, the the latest the latest top out time. So April 13th, I predicted the top. Didn't really predict when we went back. Predicted the top here. 2017, nailed the top here. And what this is is the 111 day moving average crossing over the 350 uh, day moving average times two. And then the last one that we had, and and it predicted it accurately was uh, April when we topped out around 63,000 or so. But you see this this nice little dip here, that's the 111 day moving average, like a big belly, kind of comes down and then it starts to go up. We've got a long way to run before we start to hit the top because look where we're at right now, barely going up. So I see some big things and I, uh, I'm hopeful for the future, but again, I've always said it, I've said it before, I'll say it again. September was a bad month, which is, it was. 
October was the turnaround, and I'm waiting for November, December to just be fireworks. Anyhow, let me know what you think about it in the comment section. Let's get to today's top story. Also, before we do that, you may have noticed that in the top left-hand corner, got a new little piece right here from Unstoppable Domains. Just so you know, if you want to, they are getting going with their dot wallet. So you can buy every types of thing that you want to as far as uh, for Unstoppable Domains, for the NFTs, uh, for to actually have like your name or for a website uh, as far as like web3 goes so instead of having this is why i got it i i i use unstoppable domains for two reasons first of all i was around for the dot com bubble and i knew that a lot of people just bought a bunch of dot com addresses and just held on to it so i thought eh, i'll just buy a bunch of those types of things when web3 gets around i use unstoppable domains for that the second reason is because i hate sending people this long hash of my Bitcoin address or my Ethereum address or whatever else. With Unstoppable Domains, you can take that big long address and just turn it down to like, mine is like danteaches.crypto. And they just send pretty much whatever cryptocurrency you want to to that address. And it just goes there. Super simple, super easy. Now they've got the dot wallet and um, you, you can uh, sign up for that and see if you get like something pretty pretty easy, like, uh, I don't know, Peggy dot, I don't know. Peggy.wallet or Joe.wallet or something like that. Anyhow, there's a link in the description. You can check that out. Now let's get on to our first piece, MasterCard. So I thought this is pretty big. And uh, I think it's big because every little bit helps. And I think this is even a, not even a little bit. I think it's a big thing. So what's going on here? MasterCard says that any bank or merchant on its vast network can offer crypto services. And uh, just to break it down into two paragraphs, this is what it, this is pretty much what it is. Thousands of banks and millions of merchants on its payment network can soon integrate crypto into their product. Let me say that again. Thousands of banks, thousands of banks and millions of merchants on the MasterCard network can integrate crypto into their products. I think, I mean, it's just amazing how far things have come. I remember in 2017, we were nowhere near this. And now here we are. We've got MasterCard running their running their th running their show. We've got Visa doing the same type of thing with uh, cryptocurrencies. We've got banks. We've got JP Morgan getting into the game. We've got Fidelity. Well, we had Fidelity before. We've just got all these different. I mean, heck, we've even got a couple of countries uh, using it for their legal tender. I mean, it, it, it just doesn't get much better than this. And it couldn't come at a better time. Also on top of that, just so you know, this includes Bitcoin wallets, credit and debit cards that earn rewards in crypto and enable digital assets to be spent and loyalty programs where airline or hotel points can be converted into Bitcoin. So just so you know, Visa and MasterCard here and throughout the world, they are essentially the big players. And uh, this is from uh, Statista.com, forecast of leading payment cards in the United States in 2023. Right now in 20, well, 2021 is not over. So 2020, uh, as far as the um, uh, payment volume, you're looking at around 800 to a trillion for MasterCard, around 2 trillion for Visa. And this is what they project in just a couple of short years, 2.2 uh, .2 trillion for MasterCard and 5 trillion for Visa. So if they're doing all these transactions, of course, they're making a pretty good amount of money just from this. When they start to offer this up to all their banks that work with MasterCard and Visa and all of the merchants that work with MasterCard and Visa, how far do you think this could go? Again, this is a step in the right direction. And every little piece that we can get uh, into people's consciousness of crypto, I think so much the better. And then lastly, uh, this article talks about they partnered up with Bact. And uh, backed, if you don't know, they are the. Uh, it was started up the international the international continental exchange or ICE, which is the sister corporation of the New York Stock Exchange. Backed is one of their offsprings, I guess you can call it, and it's like a super wallet. Um, I downloaded it myself, but I couldn't even get past the uh, security questions, so I couldn't even use it. But I mean, it looks cool. Let's see if it works out. But you got crypto trading, you got rewards, which I think is pretty cool. You can have like your hotel and Chase and and uh, mileage and stuff like that just right there and then you can get uh, crypto back like bitcoin back you can send payments crypto and cash on the same thing gift cards and stuff and whatever else and you can download right now and play around with it i use it for like a, i said a second i couldn't get past the challenge question so i'm like either i'm really not that good at these challenges to get past it or it just didn't work too hot anyhow that's what we have in that little piece let me know what you think in the comment section 
Let's move on to our second one where Elon Musk does it again, but it really didn't matter. And this is the most interesting part, I thought. So this was a tweet from Shiba Inu Hodler. He says, hey, Elon Musk, how much Shiba are you holding? And he just says none. And then, of course, as soon as he said none, it dropped by like, I want to say 8 or 10%, just like that, just because of Elon Musk's tweet. Isn't that amazing? Uh, however, it really didn't matter because as we took a look at uh, the price action, Shiba Inu, let me see here, is up by 5% an hour, 7, let me put this, let me put this in here, 17% in the last 24 and seven days it's up 45 percent. doesn't matter so like i said in the last hour it's still up five percent and in 24 it's 17 percent so it's an amazing thing that uh elon musk tweets out something and he, he still has a little bit of pull but again like i said the shiba inu um community is strong enough to pull them all back however this will probably be the last time i talk about shiba we talked about it yesterday and i know people were like well some people hate it and some people love it. And I, I don't really care. I mean, it's it's just an investment. There's no, there should be no emotion attached to it. It's just, it's a nothing. It's just something you do. So the only thing I did was I just did a quick search on Etherscan and uh, I just put out, I'm like, hey, there's this, uh, out of like the top 100 tokens or 100 uh, wallets, it's like 82% of the entire uh, supply. And then, uh, you can go to Etherscan right now and just find the token Shiba Inu. And then underneath here, if you wanted to do this yourself, see where it says, where am I? Uh, holders right here. When you click on that, it shows you uh, all the top holders and who has what. Now, this one right here, this black hole, I guess this is where they, they go to burn. They burned a ton of different, uh, a ton of, I guess it's a burn. That's what people have told me. That's what I've read. Uh, that it goes there and just never escapes. It's like, just goes away. So like 41% of the one quadrillion, yeah, that's right. It's a quadrillion is just gone. But then if you take a look, see this little button right here? It says token holders chart in the upper left-hand corner. If you click on that, it'll give you a breakdown of uh, all the different wallets. And you can see here the top 100 holders collectively own 81%. But what's even crazier is if you go to like the top 25 and click on that, um, the top 25 holders own 78%. And of course, if you take away this wallet, which is like 40%, you still got a big boatload. I mean, that's a lot of Shiba to hold for just this amount. And for me, like, I know people will say, but Rob, you don't understand. It has a DEX. That's great. It's got a DEX. Uh, but it's still based on Ethereum. It's an ERC-20 token, and that means that the gas prices are high. But Rob, you don't understand because they're going to have their own mainnet. They're going to move over to uh, uh, an L2 um, token, uh, just like Polygon, and the fees are going to be low. That's great, but you got to you got to compete with all the different uh, layer two solutions, and then you have to you know build like that. For me, this isn't my play. This may be your play, and this is going to be the last time I talk about it. So good luck to all these Shiba holders. That's all I got. All right, so finishing up, two more things, and this one will go pretty quickly. Oh, man, Janet Yellen. She's the uh, head of the CFTC, and this is what she said. I'm not going to play it. Basically, I'm going to let you watch it. I'm going to link this in there, but all she said is this. We're looking at doing taxes for the unrealized tax gains. What does that mean? If you buy a stock or a security or a crypto at $100, and it goes up to 150, you made 50 bucks. Even if you don't sell it at the end of the year, they're saying it's an unrealized tax gain and they will still tax you on it. Uh, I know this, this sounds like a joke, but it's not a joke. And they're like, that's what we're gonna do. So you're gonna, it's gonna, it's a, just stupid. It's, uh, it's going to um, really force people to stop being investors and really just hold on to the cash. Uh, where it just gets uh, eroded away by inflation. So Janet, on, on this video, to be fair, she just, she just talks about, well, this is for the high net worth individuals, the billionaires. And she goes, it's not a wealth tax, but we're taxing the wealthy. And like, what? okay. And uh, of course, she also talks about how um, if you're a billionaire, you pass away, you leave it off to your, to your heirs. Right now, the way that it works is that when the heirs get it, when the family gets whatever assets that you uh, passed on to them, it's at that value 
um, like let's say they have a, a million dollar house and it passes over and you bought that house for a hundred thousand and went to a million, you would have been taxed on 900,000. But if you pass on to your heirs, uh, after you pass away, then it's just valued at, at a million and then they get taxed of if it goes up or down. So she's saying, even at that point, which is like a death tax, just like, this is what we're going to do again. I think this is a, a lot of posturing, and you're going to hear a lot about this uh, moving forward. I just don't see how they could possibly bring this forward, even to the super wealthy, because here's here's a news flash: the super wealthy don't play by the same rules that you and I do. So all they're going to do is they're going to put it into a trust and say, "I don't own that," or they're going to put it into a C corp or an S corp, an offshore account. I don't own that. That's part of that's part that's part of the company, and it's going to trickle down to just the straight up individual investors who made a lot of money and be like, now pay us. No, we can't pay you. The problem is that you spend too much and you guys keep printing. And that's the problem. So um, that's just a little quick little rant about what's going on. Let me know what you think about that in the comments. That'll be caliente, I'm sure, when you talk about it. Uh, but uh, yeah, we'll see how it all goes. And lastly, uh, Dan teaches crypto. So the 100% free website's doing great. Uh, we've got a lot of signups lately, and because we've had we've had over 20,000 plus signups, uh, because I mean it's free, it's good information. Uh, the thing is though, uh, it's slow, and it's bog getting bogged down by by everybody. So what I've decided to do is to migrate from uh, one uh, server individual into a pretty powerful, more powerful server. Uh, so it can actually run quickly because time is money and if you want to learn fast, uh, that's just how it has to be So that'll be happening over the next uh, three to five days So if you see some intermittent outages, don't be alarmed. It's just we're crossing over so we can give This information free and fast and that's it. So look uh, if you uh, made it with me all the way to the end First, thanks. I appreciate it. If you like that video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. That helps tremendously. Consider subscribing because a lot of things are going to come super fast in the next couple of months. But that's it for today. So thanks so much. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one.